Today, I'm gonna share with you some exclusive insider tips on content creation. I'm Krista, and this is Two Way Mirrors. So, I've been doing this content creator thing for just over a year, and I've accumulated tons of experience concentrating on creating with web design, YouTube videos, and social media marketing, and so on. So now I'm ready to share those tips with you. So I've been working on content creation on a daily basis for over a year now, and I'm super excited to share with you these tips that helped me over the past year and things that just may not be so obvious. So if you're looking to be a content creator, follow these guidelines to a T. First and foremost, you wanna make sure your equipment is ready to roll. So that means charging up everything beforehand. We love using gimbals, <laughs> GoPros, and cell phones to get all of our footage. And in terms of gimbals, we've tr actually tried two different kinds, but we prefer the Osmo Mobile over the DJ Ronin. Because for us, mobility is key, and for the DJ Ronin, for our purposes, we found it was just way too heavy and not practical for us. At the beginning, you want to make sure everything's charged. And at the end, you want to make sure you plug all that stuff in so you just don't forget over time. Like, you may just set it aside and be like, whoosh, oh, man, I'm so tired. But no, just take those few extra minutes and plug it in. Another great tip is paying attention to the seasons. So this is something I've gotten into pretty recently, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> We've got the Christmas stuff out right now because Pretty much everyone is skipping Thanksgiving this year and going straight to Christmas. So we figured, why not follow suit? Okay, so there's some really great things that go on when you are looking at the seasons. First of all, you could target people that are looking for Christmas things or Thanksgiving or Easter, which means you can also interject those hashtags into Instagram and Facebook and even try and rank on Google for something like that. Another great thing about seasonal uh, targeting is people know that you're making those videos right now because Christmas is happening right now. We, like, we're not recording this video at Easter and then publishing it at Christmas. Like That just wouldn't make sense. So it vibrates up your channel to make it look super seasonal and festive. But it gives you some different degrees of variability, like you can take anything you're doing and twist it to a seasonal, a seasonal thing, <laughs> but yeah. So that's the great thing about seasons. Next pro tip for content creation is having bullet points and a script. So I actually prefer bullet points because um, on any given day we have some different video ideas and we're just like, let's do this. So we get the main ideas down and then we just stick it up on our teleprompter. So check this out. We have the presidential set up with some bullet points in the browser. And so I'm able to glance over and get an idea of what I want to say next without writing everything out line by line. And this allows you to just create super fast videos on the, on the fly. Next up, you want to make sure your outfit is coinciding with your video. So you want to make sure you're giving off that right vibe. Like, I'm full Christmas right now. We've got the Christmas tree, we've got the Christmas shirt, the pants, the hat, like everything is working together to create that vibe to make it the ultimate video. So we also include things like the ultimate beer pong table with the two-way mirror glass paralleling to infinity. And behind me we have my whole channel here just uh, representing from behind. So everything in, that you see on camera is fully thought out. We put it there for a reason. So I don't know if you've noticed the main vibe on YouTube, but a lot of people making videos, they're using a white backdrop with the little visionette or whatever you call it. And that looks nice for some videos, but to compete, to have that awesome edge, you want to get raw. You want to look unscripted. You want to appeal to the audience that's viewing YouTube. And 
Let's be real, they don't want something super polished that looks like a TV commercial. You need those excellent drone shots and B-roll footage and just putting it together as fast as you can to create every day. One more thought on that white background. So if you have a website and you're posting videos on that website by embedding them, the white background may look really nice and is optimal for people that are trying to buy your product and you just, you just want a clean, concise video. But if you are trying to work your way backwards, like you're on YouTube and you want to attract people from YouTube to your website, you just gotta get crazy. You gotta go LED lights, Christmas gear, like just throw everything out there to the wind and just go for it. Do everything possible to attract every kind of viewer. Cue lightsaber. Watcha! Welcome to the dark side. Okay, so in terms of setting, there's one other thing we do for our videos, and that is putting up our virtual business cards. So we actually do Frame Your TVs, so that's what we have here with showing off my content and how you can reach me. So you have my phone number, the email, the website, and that's going for the whole video. So people know the entire time where to go to get more content, but also you don't have to keep telling them where to go. Okay, so after you've optimized your background, your foreground, your outfit, you then want to optimize the lighting. You want people to be able to see what you look like and you don't want a grittiness to your video. So that means honing in on the brightness such that it illuminates you but doesn't overpower you. And in our case, since we have LED lights everywhere, and beer pong tables, we try to keep it pretty minimal in terms of lighting, but at the same time, just Keeping a nice balance is key. First and foremost, when I started content creating, I realized over the past year, after doing daily research and experiencing this over and over again, the number one tip I have is making sure your phones, your GoPro, your recording equipment are all fully charged. So let me show you some of our favorites. We are currently using a gimbal, the Osmo Mobile, combined with the Samsung Note to record the videos. Now, we record inside and it's kind of dark in here, so that's why we're using the Note for video creation. Because it has a little pinhole camera, so it's optimal for the darker, lower light environments. Whereas, if you're using a DSLR, you really need a lot of lighting to get the best quality, and it's just not optimal for us. So for that reason, we love this because it's super easy to hold, you don't get tired, and it takes minutes to set up. So you can get recording in no time. Okay, so the gimbal is used for our main recording angle. To get some other angles that you can use to slice up your video and make it more dynamic, uh, you can use a ring light. So that's what we're using over here to get that extra footage. We have an, another phone set up recording just at a side angle so we can switch up and use that angle at certain points in the video. Another useful tool we love to use is the new GoPro. So it's featuring this new ultra buttery smooth stabilization and I gotta tell you it's just awesome for tutorial videos like how to frame your mirror TV or how to build a touch overlay smart mirror. So this allows you to put it on the chest and just go and get that first person action in your videos. However, when you're using its full capabilities, the battery goes super fast if you're recording the whole time. So we actually got some extra batteries so we can just swap it out when needed and just always be recording, no gap, don't have to wait for it to charge. It's just awesome. All right, so I've already talked about using bullet points and the script. Now, how do you actually use that? So we use a presidential teleprompter here to make this video so I can see my bullet points, as I mentioned earlier. But 
you could, if you're looking to actually record with one angle and it's not moving around, which is the case for most people, you can use the executive teleprompter and have the camera right behind the mirror. And that way, when you're looking at your script, you can just be constantly reading it or pulling ideas from it and then getting that direct eye contact through the teleprompter. Next pro tip I have for you is using multiple microphones for your audio. You always want to have a backup. So I'm using right now the lapel mic. I don't know if you can see it there. Boop. So this helps get really awesome audio right up close. And I'm the only one talking in this video, so it's perfect for me. You can also get a splitter mic. So if you have two people close to the camera, you can share like one audio input and record really great quality audio that way. I love the lapel mic because we are using the gimbal for most of our footage. So it varies as to where, how close the first camera is to me. So the audio can be changing as the camera's moving. But if you have that lapel mic, it's no problem. You're getting the same audio quality, same volume the whole time you're recording. Another tip regarding the audio is that you can mask some of the audio with really nice background music. Uh, all right. Softly playing to distract people from the background noise. I have first-hand experience trying to edit audio files in Adobe Premiere and it's really difficult to get all that background noise out just by deleting it using their uh, noise cancellation tool. I'm sure it's possible, but it's super time consuming, at least for me right now. So background music is definitely the winner in terms of pumping out videos, making it awesome, and solving that problem. You can use drone photography and videography for pretty much anything that you're doing. For instance, we had a Halo teleprompter set up and I was just disco dancing. And it was just epic, okay? We had the drone flying in and it was capturing me from like far away and you know, you get the where it's going up in the air and then it's like surveilling across the lawn until you see the product in action which is just so cool. And you can pretty much lay anything out there if you're selling a product and use that drone footage. So the best time to do outside drone videography is actually at twilight or when it's overcast. So we set up some drone footage with the ring light and it was twilight. And so I had all these LEDs on, which was perfect for that time of day because you could really see them popping but you still have some daylight, so the, so the footage isn't super grainy. You still get really nice video quality during that time. So in doing the drone photography and videography, we tested out two different drones. This is one of them right here. So before we pulled out the big boys, we wanted to try something a little bit smaller. You know, handheld, fits in your pocket, it's better to start small before you go big. So we tried this out, which was really sweet, but it only records in 1080p, and we really wanted that 4K quality. So we upgraded to this huge drone. Um, so we started out with the Spark. So it's super small, handheld. You can fold it up, fit it in your pocket when you're on the go, but great for practice because you, it comes with little guards to put around the blades, and the replacement parts are super cheap. So, for that reason, it's really awesome. And it does have like a hyper speed mode, sport mode, so it's kind of cool too. If you happen to be doing really fast footage. After we got a little more comfortable with drone videography, we switched over to the Inspire 2, which by comparison is like, psh, psh, it's huge. And it's more difficult to fly it, but it does record in 4K, which is what we want. So 
the Spark records in 1080p, which is nice for a lot of people, but if you've watched any of our videos, we've recommended over and over again that you record in the highest quality possible. 4K, 60 frames per second, if you can. Okay, so once we had our practice down with the Spark, we upgraded to the Inspire 2. And I gotta say, it's super awesome, but a lot more difficult to fly. We invested in this virtual reality headset for the drone to be able to fly the Inspire 2. And this works with all of the DJI drones. So you just put this thing on, and you're able to move it around and fly the drone with this headset. And it makes it so much easier because you can control it and actually see what the drone is doing, you know, instead of just viewing it on a smaller screen in a camera like your phone, you get the full experience with this. So this headset actually has a flip-up feature, so if you need to get out of the virtual reality and get a direct line of sight to your drone, you just simply flip it up. So it flips up, flips back down, back up again. So awesome. One final thing I want to say about the Inspire 2 is that because it's bigger and it moves a little bit slower and it's heavier, that actually made it easier to get smooth footage. Whereas with the Spark, it's so small and like just flutters in the wind that a lot of the footage tends to be a little bit more choppy and less buttery. Okay. Next pro tip I have for you guys is to make a study of acting, facial expressions, tonality, and just in general, getting into the part where you're the entertainer. You are on YouTube. You are on Vimeo. You're making a video because people want to be entertained. So you need to figure out how to be the entertainer. And that comes naturally as you start to use your hands, your face, and you become way more aware of those things over time. I don't know if you've seen any of my other videos, but in the beginning, I was like stone faced, right? I was like, and I got so many comments of like, whoa, you're too serious. Or in fact, we got a lot of comments of, whoa, you have too much energy. You need to tone it down. I want to feel like I'm in a conversation with you. So. I feel like I've honed in and ha and now I'm able to just be myself a little bit more, if that makes sense, but also in an entertainer way. Like, what I'm saying is super interesting because of how I'm saying it, as well as the content. So, and that also plays into, like, your costume. So the first step into, like, Getting yourself ready for the acting and the dancing is getting the perfect costume because it's so much easier to be someone else. So if you're putting on a costume for cosplay and you're studying and you've used our, our teleprompter tips, then you may be ready to make some killer videos. Okay, so if you've been watching this far, that's great. I have a few bonus tips that you may want to know about. So, we've gone through things, steps, all these ideas, right? And now let's get down to what we're doing on a daily basis. I recommend keeping a journal of ideas. You could use an Excel spreadsheet, Airtable, Trello, OneNote to hold on to these ideas, but it's really awesome to just have those on the ready. So if you're like, whoa, I need to make an idea. I need to make a video right now today. I'm ready. But you have no content ready, then you're probably not going to make a video. So having that journal is super helpful. It's just great to have. Another pro tip is to study other creators on a daily basis. I hear it all the time from other YouTubers that you should find someone that you want to be and emulate them. Well, that's super true. However, there's not a lot of people doing what we do, so I just look for people that have a really amazing presence on camera. For instance, I really love Peter McKinnon and Dan Locke. 
<laughs> so I study these guys all the time in terms of how they create their videos so I can further my own craft for my channel. Okay, last pro tip I have for you guys is to study and work on video editing every day. More importantly, I recommend like when you create a video, it's super powerful to just do what you can, piece it together, and publish it, and move on to the next video. You don't want to be working for months on end on one single video. <laughs> So what I found really helpful is to just make a ton of videos and hone in on like one special effect each time that you want to add to your repertoire of video editing skills and you can use that video to master that one skill and then, then you just move on to the next video. That way you're publishing all the time and you're not thinking about too many things at once and you can just keep, continue that momentum. One of my favorite tools is a teleprompter. So the easiest, fastest way to get your script on the laptop, on your screen so you can read it to make your video, is to actually create a private page on your website using HTML or whatever you're using, WordPress, and make a black background with white text, and then stick it up on Chrome. And Chrome has this super special extension called Near This. And all you do is click that button and it flips any website so you can read it off the reflection. data, all of the footage onto your PC and start labeling. One thing we really love to do when we have all this footage from multiple camera angles and the audio is put all of the, the footage in separate folders and label them based on which camera angle it is. And then from there go in and rename the files using scene numbers and uh, descriptions so you can tell exactly where in the video you were. And that just makes it really easy to go back and put all those together uh, when you're going in to edit that video. Okay, so we've covered all the basics now. We have how you're recording it, the lighting, the background, everything about your video taken care of. Now let's focus on the content. Over the last year, we've toyed around with making introductions, what to put in the middle, how long to make your video, and here's what we've come up with as to the best formula for content creating and making a video. First, you want to state the purpose of that video. Front and center, don't even introduce yourself yet, just put it out there, what people should be expecting to watch, right at the front. And then, after you explained your purpose, you can go in and be like, Ooh, alright, okay, by the way, I'm Krista, this is Two Way Mirrors, and let's get started. So, that's how we do it. Uh, initially, we were doing intro first and then purpose, but I find that it takes too much time and people just really want to know super fast what the video is about and what they're going to gain right then. So that's the reason for that order. After the introduction, you want to go right into the meat of the video. So this is where you're explaining a product or you're selling yourself and or maybe you're going through tips and you just want to put as much information as possible, valuable information, no fluff, and really make that video as long as possible. Because it, it matters much more to YouTube, as I feel, that the video is long and they're, you're accumulating that view minute. Because if you have a longer video, your view minutes are gonna skyrocket. Whereas if you have a bunch of smaller videos, it's going to take a lot more time to get that same view minute count. So stretch it out, but make it count. And then in your conclusion, you want to have a call to action, something specific that you want your people to comment on or visit your website. Just tell them what you want them to do and 
make it concise and specific. All right, once you've concluded, you wanna leave a little bit of space, approximately 20 seconds at the end of a black screen or some B-roll or just some nice music. So you can put your informational cards up and push people to the next video in your playlist or something you want them to watch. All right guys, so that wraps up my tips one year into content creating. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share. First of all, if you like these kind of videos. But I wanna hear from you. What have you learned as a content creator? What was the most useful information you had up front that helped you further your content game? I wanna hear your top content creator tip in the comments below. I'm Krista and this is Two Way Mirrors. Don't forget to check out the website for more exclusive tips related to content creation. I'm out of 5,000.